Good evening. My name is Barnett Overett. I chair the Town of Foxborough Zoning Board of Appeals. I'm calling to order the February 18, 2021 public meeting of the board, including the public hearings that the board will conduct. In accordance with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts executive orders of March 12, 2020 and November 2, 2020, that suspend certain provisions of the open meeting law and impose limits on the number of individuals that may gather indoors. We are conducting this meeting virtually by Zoom. Public comments this evening will be accepted during the public hearing. To offer comments by, by Zoom, you will be asked to use the button in Zoom that is labeled raise hand. This will alert us that you wish to speak. We will individually bring you into the meeting. If you are planning to speak tonight, you may wanna take a moment to find the Zoom button Make sure that you are in a quiet space and have a working microphone. Also, please be sure that your Zoom window includes your name. If you are participating by phone, you can raise your hand by dialing star nine. If you will not be speaking tonight, we recommend and request that you not use Zoom, but instead watch this meeting on Foxborough Cable Access by cable television, their YouTube channel, or Facebook Live. In the event of any technical difficulties, matters on our agenda that cannot be considered, considered automatically will be continued to the board's next meeting. That meeting is currently scheduled for March 18, 2021. All votes that we take tonight will be done by roll call. At this time, I wish to recognize the other members of the board, David Brown, Kimberly Mellon, Kurt Yegian, and Lorraine Brew. Mr. Brown, Ms. Mellon and I are regular members of the board. Mr. Yegian and Ms. Brew are associate members. All members will participate in the matters that we are considered this evening. However, only the three regular members are authorized to vote during tonight's scheduled public hearings, unless a regular member recuses himself or herself. In that event, <clears throat> an associate member will be authorized to vote in such regular members' stead. A unanimous vote of the voting members is required in order to approve the matters that are the subject of a public hearing. Finally, I wish to recognize Diana Gray, the board's administrative assistant, and Barry Ringler, the Town of Foxborough Building Commissioner and Zoning Enforcement Officer. For the time being 7 o'clock p.m., Jeffrey, v Jeffrey Vito seeks a special permit pursuant to sections 4.2.5 and 5.4.2 of the code of the town of Foxborough, Massachusetts, chapter 275 zoning to allow the construction of an attached two car garage addition with a front yard setback of 16.3 feet where 35 feet is required. The property located at five Harlow road is in the R40 residential and agricultural district and is not located in any restrictive overlay district. Uh, Mr. Zvito, I see that you're here. I am, yes. Okay, before um, before I turn the uh, floor, so to speak, to you, I just want to make a clarifying point. Um, when you initially applied for a special permit, you applied for that permit under Section 5.2 of the Zoning Bylaw. And that application was based on the fact that Tom Wren, in denying the initial building permit, stated that you must go to the board to get a special permit under Section 5.2. Though he correctly stated that a special permit was required from the board, he incorrectly cited the uh, zoning bylaw provision that was applicable. Section 5.2 deals with non-conforming uses. Non-conforming use is a use that's not permitted by the, by the zoning bylaw. A garage is a conforming use. It's a permissible use. However, because your house currently is within the, in the uh, front yard setback, and because the garage, when it's added to the house, would exacerbate or intensify that setback, what we're dealing with is a non-conforming structure. In other words, a structure that doesn't comply with the dimensional requirements of the zoning bylaw. Now, for us to approve your application, we will need to determine that your house with an attached garage that has a front yard setback of 16.3 feet is not substantially more detrimental to your neighborhood than is the existing non-conforming house. You have any questions? 
I do not have any questions. No. Okay, that being the case, the floor is yours. Why don't you tell us what you're planning and we'll let, probably have some questions for you. Okay, great. Um, so we're planning on building a two-car garage uh, more for our personal use and necessity. Um, so the two-car garage, when you talk about that footage of 16 foot feet and 25 feet, I just wanted to be clear that we're clear that that's to the sidewalk. I know the law says to the street, but there's another 10 feet from that to the actual street. So if the measurements um, of, of 25.9 on one side to the 16 feet, uh, the middle range there is like 21 feet plus the 10 feet is 31 feet. So we find that there is enough room there. Um, I also uh, took some Google Earth pitches of my house that I submitted with it so you can see where the garage is going on the side of the house. And there's some cars actually parked in the driveway with the sidewalk there. Um, we also um, had spoken to all our neighbors, not just the abutting neighbors, and we, we submitted a list of our entire neighborhood after showing the plans to our neighbors um, on what we wanted to do to the property and how it would look on the property. And they were all in agreement and willing to sign that piece of paper. That's my entire neighborhood, the 30 houses that are in here. Um, we did take into consideration when building this garage, when I said it was out of necessity, we have our, my father-in-law is planning on moving in with us. He is um, slightly disabled right now with a dropped foot. We see him uh, not in the near future, uh, the near future he will not be able to be using it's just as cane, it'll be a wheelchair. So we had to build the garage or design the garage a little oversized so we could plan on putting a handicap ramp in coming down the side so we could actually fit it in. So just to clarify, the, the garage will be attached to the house. Yes, it will be attached to the house and it'll be parallel where it says 25 feet, it's coming straight off of that. Okay. And the plans that you uh, submitted with the, the application, that's the plans that you're intending to use when you construct the garage? Yes, sir. And the, um, the will, will the driveway be widened then to, to accommodate access to the garage? Yes, uh, the driveway is uh, going to be uh, three car lanes wide and run along the garage. Okay. Anybody wants to have a, anyone else have a question or questions? Uh, I do have a quick question. Uh, this is Kim. Um, our, so I see in the, in the pictures and when I drove by, it, it appears as if there's two driveways right now is your intention, if this is approved, to keep both of those driveways? And you said there would be- No, those, those driveways would be gone. The driveway would be just the two car garage and um, enough of a passageway to run along the side of the garage. So both existing driveways would no longer be there? Correct, correct. And so somewhat the we're- in. Do you see the patch of grass in between the two driveways? Yes. That would be the new driveway. Okay, thank you. In, in, in essence, the garage will be where the fence is, correct? Yes, uh, the fence is a little tilted. So uh, the, the fence would actually put it at 25 feet. So um, if you turn that fence just a little bit, that's where we're off there. Mm -hmm. So to follow up on Kim's questions, the two existing drivers, you planning to tear them up and, and grass that in? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Dave, any just questions? As, just, as, just as on the plans, I believe right on the plans that uh, we gave you from the architect has the driveway too. Bonnie, can we get the, the uh, plan up on the screen here? Diana? 
She's on mute. There we go. Okay. Let me unmute. So you want, um, what do you want to look at, Dave? You want the Google thing? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the, um, what do we call it? The footprint. Oh, and there's the picture with the pool and all that. Yeah. Okay, I just refreshed my memory. I drove by it a couple of weeks ago, actually. There's an architect plan in, in there that should show you um, a drawing of the house. Let's see, I gotta make it smaller. Probably this one. Um, well, it looks like the concept back. drawings that are actually 3D. That's the back of the house. This one? That would be the front. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the front. That's what it would look like. So the, the garage would just be right where the two, uh, the driveway would be just in front of the two, two garages with a walkway along the side. So how, how large is this structure? It is uh, 30 by 30. So it's 30 deep and 30 and the 30 across, you just have the two garage doors. So that it section yeah, in so, it shows like the new back door, I guess, and a little bit more of that. That's new. That's part of the addition. Am I right? Yes. Oh, that I know you part of the garage. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. So, what I was trying to figure out. Okay. We want to be able to go in that garage door, that door beside the garage doors, and have a wheelchair ramp go up into the house there. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's extending it. Usually it's 24 by 24. So right. we extended enough so we could get the ramp in there. Okay. You know, we just want to be able to take him to, you know, to his office visit, doctor's visits and stuff yeah. in a safer uh, manner way, you know. I understand. I put an addition on my house a year or so ago and I set some things up with the idea that Hopefully, you know, if we end up on a wheelchair, we're ready to go, you know. Uh, Kurt, okay, I've got nothing else. Okay, Kurt, any questions? Kurt's on you. All right, I think I'm off now. Yeah. So yeah, my only question is uh, you know, the usual stuff. Uh, assuming that this goes forward, the garage would be, you know, keeping in context with the house uh, as far as materials, colors, and the rest of the neighborhood, that kind of thing? Absolutely. Okay, good. And, and one question I have um, is if the, a new driveway is being put in, what has to happen or who has to get involved in order to get that curb cut or the curb removed in that space? Uh, I would I would assume my excavator, the guy putting the driveway in, is going to do that. So where the new driveway is going, we could take mm. the curb that's there and put it where the old driveways were. Right. Uh, I understand that. Yeah. I'm thinking that sometimes, uh, you know, the town needs to get involved mm. if it's, it's their curb. You know, I don't know what approvals, if any, are, necessary, are needed to do that. Okay, I'm willing to pay for that. Yeah, yeah I'm willing to pay for that. Yes. Uh, Barry, Barry. Yes. Is, is that something that comes under your jurisdiction or the uh, highway department? Yeah, that's us plus highway, uh, the engineering for the street. Uh -huh. yeah. So, so when when you would issue a building permit, would you require something of that nature, or how would you deal with that at that point? Yeah, we want to see how wide it is to meet the width of the bylaw. It can only be so wide, you know. Uh, and then, again, DPW would look at it to see about if there's any hydrants there or if there's town trees or anything there that to, not mm -hmm. to be disturbed or cause a problem, then how close it is to intersections. But in this case, uh, there's nothing in the way. Uh, I don't remember uh, the size of the driveway. What's the width of the driveway? 24 feet. Okay, yeah, so 24 feet works. That's the max. And then it's 26 at the curb itself in the street. So that would be fine as far as compliant with zoning. That would be the zoning aspect for us. From there, 
you know, uh, Chris Gallagher and, and company at DPW uh, would be in the engineering department would be looking at it for uh, uh, curb cut approval because it's a it's a town owned. Uh, you know, the curb is, is town owned. So would, it, would the town also require where the current driveways are, would they require a new curb to be put in? I would think so. That's more their, uh, you know, requirements. Uh, the building department doesn't get involved in that requirement. Okay. Kurt, anything else? Uh, no, that's all I have. Thanks. Okay. Lorraine? No, I don't have any questions. Thanks, Bonnie. Okay. Anybody else? Kim, Dave, all set? Bonnie, I do, I do have a couple more questions. So yeah, I just ahead. want to make, make sure that I'm understanding. You had said this was for personal use. So any intention of using this for commercial use? No, no. When I say personal, just my wife and I to park our cars in there. A little, you know, comfort from the weather and the elements that we have that we've been living here. We've lived in this house for 24 years now. Uh, we, our family has grown here. We've, we got married and we moved into this house. We want to stay in this house. When I say personal, it's just for us, nothing commercial. Okay, thank you. And also, um, will you be putting, is your intention to have running water in the garage? No. Okay, and, and what kind of electricity are you anticipating in the garage? Uh, just standard outlets, um, uh, the two door garage uh, opening, that's about it, and lighting. Basic. Okay, thank you. Okay, does any member of the public wish to be heard? Okay, what I'm going to do is just read very quickly the, um, whether you call it a petition or a letter um, that you submitted. And it says, we as neighbors to Jeff and Laura Vito have seen the plan, plans and drawings to a proposed two car garage and agree that proposed garage fits into our neighborhood and does not infringe on any property or is too close to the street. We would welcome the addition to, the, to their house. There are, I'm not gonna try to read all the names. I have trouble reading some of the handwriting and, and it is kind of faint, uh, but there were 30 individuals who reside in the neighborhood who, um, who signed the letter of petition, whatever we wanna call it, who obviously are, are in favor of, um, of what you're proposing. So unless there are any other questions from the board members, uh, why don't we have a motion and- I have one, those. Bonnie, oh. I have one question. Go ahead, go ahead. Um, did anybody decline to sign your petition? No, they did not. There's 30 okay. houses in the, in the neighborhood, all 30 signed it. 30 for 30, okay, very good. Um, um, I have a motion to close the public hearing. I move we close the public hearing. Second. Dave Brown. Okay, let me do a roll call. Dave Brown. Yes. Kim Mellon. Yes. And Barney over it. Yes. So let me start. Um, you know, as I mentioned at the beginning, what we have to determine is whether this is or is not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood um, with the garage than the uh, current house is. And I think the fact that you've got almost all of your neighborhood signing or all your neighborhood signing off on the, um, on the petition indicates that it would not be substantially more detrimental. And obviously uh, that, that would be an understatement because obviously it's uh, shown to be welcomed by your neighbors. So other than the fact that I would have um, a, a handful of uh, conditions to impose, um, I'm certainly in favor of the, um, of the application. As the board may remember a couple of years ago, we approved a similar application in the neighborhood. I think that was for eight Hallowell, the Del Pizos. Um, so this would be the second application of this nature that we've um, considered within a two year period. Dave? Uh, I don't have any problems uh, with this. Uh, you know, I think the problem with that neighborhood is the way all the roads kind of curve around, you know, mm -hmm. they don't really square off. so they it's very hard to, uh, you know, place a house in a garage, you know, within the setbacks. So I would, you know, be inclined to uh, approve this with uh, normal conditions. Okay, Kim? I agree with uh, both of you. This does not appear to be substantially more 
detrimental to the neighborhood. Okay, Kurt. He's on mute. I would agree that this, it's not more it's not more detrimental to the neighborhood. And uh, yeah, I would agree with that. Okay, Lorraine. I also agree with that it's not more detrimental. Okay. So why don't we um, talk about the conditions first? Actually, Barry, do you have any other questions or comments? No. Nope. Okay. Why don't we talk about the conditions first and then we can do a motion. So the first one that I would impose would be to state that the garage is a one and a half story, two car, two car structure that's constructed in accordance with the dimensions that are set forth in the garage plans. Um, second, that the location of the garage would be as shown on the, um, the zoning plan such that the front yard setback of the garage is not less than 16.3 feet at its closest point. And three, that the external materials of the garage are to be comparable in type and color as that of the existing residential structure. Anything else? I would um, say no, no business is to be conducted. Mm -hmm. And I think I would also say something about the uh, curb cut should be relocated to any highway department requirements. Mm -hmm. I, I have a question. Yep, go ahead. Uh, when you talk about business, uh, you're not referring to uh, what they have allowed by right, you know, non-intensive home market. Right, yeah. yeah. They're no. they're not referring to that. Yeah, not that, no, they can only, uh, that's a good point. We have to word that in there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So if they fit within the confines of the bylaw that does allow it by mm -hmm. right, that's okay. But something beyond that, like any other yep. building that's looking for a business certificate uh, would have to follow the bylaws. Yep. And that yep. would be the non-intensive uh, use so that's in there. Accessory use, correct. Right. Yeah, I, we know that pretty well. Right. Anything else? Then we accept the motions. Why don't you make the motion and Kim second it with those conditions? I would move. I would move that we grant the uh, petition uh, with the conditions that we have discussed uh, included. Okay, uh, Kim second. Second. Okay, uh, Dave Brown. Yes. Uh, Kim Mellon? Yes. And Barney Overett? Yes. So we've approved the application. Um, Thank you. At okay. some point within the next couple of weeks, we will sign it. Diana will file it with the town clerk. That will kick off a 20-day appeal period. When the appeal period runs, you'll need to file the decision with the Norfolk County Registry of Deeds and then provide a copy of the uh, of what you have filed with the Registry of Deeds to, which would be the decision, obviously, with uh, Mr. Ringler. And that would be a condition for him to um, to then act upon your, your building permit request. Okay. And if you have, have any questions in the interim, just give, just give Mr. Ringler a call. Okay, great. Okay. Thank yeah, you very much. Thank you very much to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Good night. Good night. Good night. We lose Frank. Uh, Frank's there. Okay, the time being 7.10 p.m. Lewis C. Sherman seeks a variance pursuant to section 4.1.1, table 4-1 of the code of the town of Foxborough, Massachusetts, chapter 275 zoning, to allow a side yard setback of 20 feet where 25 feet is required, and a modification to case number 89-27 to eliminate or modify condition number one to allow the footprint of an existing four family dwelling to be expanded with the addition of a fifth dwelling unit. The property located at 41 Sherman Street 
is in the R15 residential and agricultural district and is not located in any restrictive overlay district. Frank, would I be ready? Uh, thank you, uh, Attorney Francis Splain, uh, with the applicant here, uh, Lucas Sherman. Uh, we're here with, uh, with the property located at 4143 Sherman Street, which is within the R15 zoning district. Uh, the lot has uh, 48,300 square feet of area with 133 feet of frontage. Uh, the existing building uh, was built uh, around 1945 and possibly earlier. And the current building has a, a front yard setback of 25.9 feet. And that is um, measured from the porch back. The side yard setback is 15.4 feet uh, from one of the side yards. Um, the building is a lawful four family dwelling uh, as approved by the ZBA case number 89-27. For that uh, case, there was a, uh, um, it was either a three or a two family um, dwelling. In that case, it was determined that it was a, uh, an existing two family and with the variances and finding that was approved there, it became a lawful four family. Um, in 1989, the two family uh, dwelling requirements were 25 front yard and 15 side yard. Um, back in 89, however, the side yard was measured at 11.4 feet. Um, again, the existing side yard is 15.4 feet. I've uh, spoken with uh, Bay Colony uh, Group and, and they can't determine what, the, uh, what that error was. Uh, but looking back through the uh, past plans, both the zoning uh, plan and the initial site plan that was approved by the selectmen had the 11.4 feet. But eventually they went for a special permit, which went in front of the planning board. And at that point, it was indicated by 15.4 feet. So they eventually did catch it. Um, but uh, Mr. Buckley couldn't recall the circumstances, they said it could have been a schooner's error originally, but eventually they caught it with the special permit and the eventual building um, as built plan showed it as that. So again, under the, um, back then the two family was considered a pre-existing non-conforming structure because of what the, they thought was a side yard, which is 11.4 feet or 15 feet was required. However, at the time with a multifamily, both the side yard and the front yard requirements uh, increased to 50 feet. So in order to be a multifamily, three, four unit, you need a 50 foot um, front yard and a 50 foot side yard back then. So even if it was a three family back then, it would have been pre-existing non-conforming, but the ZBA at the time made the decision within that 89.27 case that it was previously a two family. So in order to do a four family, they needed um, zoning relief with regard to variances that were required. So in that decision, the variances were approved for front yard and side yard setbacks, as well as a 25 foot buffer strip, which was required back then. And they also uh, made a finding that wasn't substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood. So with that, the four family became a lawful four family. Um, it, it is not a pre-existing non-conforming structure because the variances make it um, a lawful structure. So it doesn't come down under the jurisdiction of a finding necessary with regard to a pre-existing non-conforming structure. But, and that's why we need variances instead of a finding in this, in this case. Um, Mr. Sherman wants to add on an additional unit and he has enough area uh, in, on the lot to put an additional uh, dwelling unit to make it from a four family again to a five family. In order to do that, it's not considered a pre-existing non-conforming structure, but a lawful structure for variances. In order to do that, he has to get an, an additional variance because his side yard will be 20 uh, feet where the side yard requirement today is 25 feet. So again, back in 89, the side yard requirement was 50 feet, but now it's 25. So we need that um, 
uh, variants in order to uh, put this addition on. Um, I think we filed some uh, plans with you showing what is being proposed. Uh, it's going to be a one floor um, unit for his parents in law, at least initially, uh, with a um, attached to garage. Uh, the living area is approximately um, 2100 square feet uh, for the first floor. Uh, there may be a basement. They haven't decided whether they're going to do a basement um, or a slab. They're looking at where they're going to put the equipment and all that. But if there is going to be a basement, uh, it'll be unfinished uh, at this time. The, the garage area is uh, approximately 294 square feet, uh, as indicated on uh, the plan. Um, again, the granted variances we need is under section 4.1.1, table 4-1. Uh, which requires a 25 foot side yard, we're proposing 20. Um, um, at, in the case 89-27, uh, the first condition states that the footprint of the existing house not be expanded. So in order to put this addition on, we have to have that modified um, or eliminated. Uh, whichever the board uh, feels more comfortable with uh, would be um, um, an additional requirement in order to put this addition on. Um, again, um, we're just four, five feet short on the side yard. If you look at the plan that we've, we've added, um, we've tried to line up the addition with the house. And that's how we get the, the five feet uh, requested. We could push the, um, thank you. We could push the addition over five feet and get the 25 feet uh, necessary. However, it would then um, uh, not be in line with the existing house. Additionally, we'd have to uh, change the um, uh, driveway entrance and exit and we would also be moving the parking area closer to the single family residence that's right next door. We want to try to keep the parking as far away from the residence as possible. So we thought the best thing to do would be align the um, uh, house uh, with the addition um, as best we could. And then um, I asked um, um, Mr. Sherman to work with his in-laws to see how narrow they can get uh, the addition that they'd be comfortable with. And I think I gave you some plans that are just draft plans uh, right now, but you'll see that it's gonna be a two bedroom with a kitchen and living area um, um, and a, a, a craft room for his uh, mother-in-law, I believe, um, for it. But they try to make it as narrow as possible, line it up with the existing house so that um, aesthetically it looks pleasing um, um, for themselves, for the neighborhood, for their neighbors and everyone else. Um, again, um, these types of units are in high demand now in Foxborough and I think probably uh, in a lot of areas in Massachusetts. Um, a lot of um, elderly are looking for the one floor living space. Um, again, there won't be a second uh, floor on it. Um, for, so they, they can just walk right in there from their garage area and live on a one floor area. So this is in high demand uh, within Foxborough. So even when his in-laws um, eventually do move out, he would, um, have a unit that would be in demand in Foxborough so that people can stay in Foxborough. Looking at the um, lot, you can see it's an odd shaped lot, um, kind of a uh, backwards L, depending on how you look at it. Um, there is a drain, two drainage easements um, at the back of the lot, uh, which allows uh, drainage from that area to flow down. Um, currently it's a ditch like, um, but there is concern that there may be some piping down there that nobody knows about because the drainage uh, goes back, uh, I believe, to the early 1900s. Um, it abuts the railroad track that's right um, 
behind it. And on the other side of the rail tracks is uh, commercial development. So behind them, there is no residential at this time. Uh, so the, the, as in the 89 case, um, uh, the, 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 the lot shape, as well as the location of the building um, on the lot really dictates the necessity for uh, this variance in keeping with um, um, the building in front of it and keeping aesthetically pleasing with it. Um, the courts have indicated that um, it, a, um, a variance request that's relatively minor uh, can be justified for a variance uh, with regard to very minor hardship. One of the things they did look into um, at this point has decided not to do is actually tearing down the building to put up a four, uh, excuse me, a five unit um, um, new building. Uh, instead, they wanted to add this uh, so that their in-laws, uh, his in-laws can live with them at that time. But it is a, it is a consideration, um, but financially, and they would have to go live somewhere else while it's being done. Uh, it would be a great hardship. They have two young children in the elementary schools. Uh, so it's something that at that point they decided not to do and um, instead do this addition uh, for their in-laws to live there. Um, I think at, that, at this point, I think um, we're done with our presentation. Are there any questions, Jim? Frank. Um it, it does Mr. Sherman and his family live in the in the building? Yes, they do. As, okay. as does um, his father uh, okay. and and um, um, uh, other tenants, one of them who's a friend. So I assume the other units are rental then. I'm sorry? The other units are rental units and it's not a condo building. Oh no, they're all rentals. Okay. They're owned all owned by him. So two family members are already renting on a occupying two of the units? Uh, one is the father, one is a very close um, um, friend, which um, uh, they consider family. Okay, but so I, I guess I'm saying the applicant and his father each have their own units along with the friend. With others, yep. Okay. So, you know, what, uh, you know, what is the footprint area of the existing structure? you know, about dimensions. Do you know them? I don't. I, I don't know them, but within the, um, I think I gave I you the, uh, no. Um, um, under the assessors, it, it indicates that the first floor, the living area and the gross areas, um, uh, 1,540 feet. That's the first two floors, then the half story is um, just over 700 square feet. But I don't know what the dimensions are. Of well, can we, can we safely say, now that I see the plan up there again, that the addition footprint is greater than the existing building? Um, not being an architect or an engineer, but guessing, yes. Okay. Um, the other question is this 17.2, Foot, I'm going to call it connector between the existing structure and the addition. Yes. What is that? That that on the plan that you'll see the, the floor plan um, mm -hmm. is a walk-in pantry for the um, addition. So a 17 foot long walk-in pantry. So so that connector is really seems to me there so you can maintain it as being a single structure. Am I right? That's a connection, yes. Big pantry, gonna have Thanksgiving here every year. <laughs> That's his plan. Yeah. Yeah. Seems like there was something else I had. Well, have, did you think about, we still on? Yeah. Narrow in the uh, the addition somewhat. So um, you don't need the variance. You know what I'm saying on that. Yes, he, he um, they they've done plans, actually pushing it out five feet more. 
And uh, I met with them and discussed it with them. And, and I explained to them that in that case, they wouldn't need the variances. We'd still have to come in front of you. <laughs> um, and at that point, they were like, you know what? We'll, we'll attempt the variance. If we don't get the variance, then we'll consider pushing it out five feet and trying to do something like that. Um, um, initially, they had the addition lined up with the side yard, you know, approximately 15 feet off of it. And when mm -hmm. I, them, I asked them, you know, can, can you narrow it down? Um, and what they did is they lined it up with that, with that. And I said, can you line it up with the house more? So it li uh, lines up. So I pretty much told them, can you narrow it down more? And uh, this is what they came, actually they came back with something else. And there were issues with the um, uh, pantry and one of the lining up that, you know, I worked with Bill Buckley on, and then he went back to his architect to, to finalize it. So this is what they eventually came back with as to, you know, if, if we can get a variance, this is, this is what we'd like. If we can't get the variance, then they'll either narrow it down or more than likely push it out to some extent. I don't know if it'll go out five feet or not, or if they'll, you know, try to push it out three feet or something like that. Um, but, the, you know, this is what they want to um, bring before this board initially to see if they would be comfortable with it. Because again, it's a, it's a um, you know, minimal variance request of five feet, uh, but, it, but it is a footprint as large as you have indicated, Dave. But again, it's a one floor living space, you know, intended for his parents-in-law. And yeah, no, I understand. And I, I understand that it's just a thing these days, the hmm. single floor living, you know, which is essentially what I do with my place. You know, it's just very big. I'll give you the historic note. I was there at that meeting in 1989 as an alternate. And I have a problem that I'm not shown on the decision. You have a, they're, shown you have a, the they're shown in the minutes though, Dave. Am I shown in the minutes? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was um, a newbie. Anyhow. Frank, I wanna to go to the, um, the variance criteria. Um, what, what's the hardship? Hmm. Well, as in with the original decision, the, the, the hardship would be, with, with, first of all, with um, dimensional variance, a minimal, relatively minor hardship is, can justify it. And in, in this case, um, you know, one of the considerations would be that they may just tear down the house and put up a, a, a brand new five unit in there that has been a consideration that they've looked into, uh, but again, wanted to go with um, just this addition for their uh, um, in-laws. Mm -hmm. Dave, being that you were, uh, you were there 30 years ago, or plus or minus, do you remember any discussion? Because there's nothing in the decision that really gets into, into variance criteria. No, I, no, Bonnie, I don't. Okay. Yeah, and the minutes don't show anything either. I think that a lot of it was, if I remember, and I, believe me, a lot of the concern was this discussion, is it a two unit, is it a three unit, mm -hmm. is it a four unit? That was, there was a lot of bantering about that. Um, and of course, Frank, Frank, you know, you gotta not get confused and think Frank was there, you know, it's that was his dad, right? His dad, yeah. I don't think my dad handled that one, but in looking to, to me, um, the history, maybe it was a come back to you, Dave. I, I looked through all the files and the um, uh, building and all that. Um, um, and it was Mr. Sherman's father that bought it at the time. And he had bought it um, within a year or so uh, from the prior owner. And the prior owner seemed to have a lot of run-ins, we'll say, with the building inspector at the time. Yeah or not keeping things quite up to code or yeah not doing position. what he it is coming back a little bit you not know. doing what he said he was going to do you know exactly and then mr sherman bought the um 
um, apartment uh, complex building and giving him the benefit of the doubt, I think he thought truly it was a three, um, yeah. uh, three family, bought it that way when it really wasn't. And um, I want to do some work and kind of got the history of it from the building inspector at the time and was told you got to bring everything up to, to code. And um, I think the resolution of it was, all right, let's get this in front of the Zoning Board of Appeals, make a decision and work to get this building fixed up and cleaned up. Because if you, when you read the uh, uh, site plan approval by the selectmen and the um, special permit from the planning board, they both go into, you have to finish painting this side of the house. You have to find, uh, paint the um, foundation. They specified, you know, he indicated it would be red. They go into some re -de real details. So just my interpretation, again, my father was involved in it, so I didn't have any files from him, but reading the town files is they're trying to get this um, building really brought up to code uh, for a number of different reasons. And with the approval, uh, it became a four unit and it brought everything up to code. And as I understand now, everything's still up to code and, and kept in good condition. Okay. But I think there was a little give and take there uh, to, to, to get that uh, structure uh, in better shape. Okay. Frank, is there enough room for um, sufficient parking? I think with five units, you would need what, 10 spaces or 11 spaces? Yes, there's uh, more than an, enough room to put what's required. Um, um, trying to see where the parking requirements we would have over, it's 2.25 per unit. Uh, with the proposed, we have 2.4 uh, per unit. And if mm -hmm. necessary, we could add additional ones. Um, um, in there, but and, and don't forget uh, one one of the um, parking spots that which is not even counted in here is the garage. Right. Because Bill Buckley didn't realize that that was a garage, which I didn't either at first until I got the plan. Mm -hmm. So that's not counted. So again, we're we're probably over, we're probably at like two point five uh, per. Okay. Year. So there's, there's plenty of space, and um, it's it's shown on that plan. Mm -hmm. And if this is approved, we're gonna, he's going to have to go in front of uh, the planning board uh, anyway. Yep. Yeah, I spoke with um, with Gabby Jordan the other day, you know, relative to, um, you know, whether you would or would not have to go before the planning board if we approved it. And she also spoke with Paige about it, and they both confirmed that to be the fact. Yes, and I've been indicating that to yeah. get go to. Um, Kim, Kurt. Lorraine, any questions? Barney. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so I'm just curious if um, there's been any response from abutters to this proposal. I have not received any. I asked Diana earlier um, if she had received any. Obviously, we'll you know request public comment if there is anybody on who wants to comment. Okay. But but nothing has been received in the office so far. Thanks, Barney. Actually, I wanted to raise that same question with uh, with Frank and Mr. Sherman. Have you had any comments or discussions with your neighbors? I talked to uh, I talked to one of my neighbors on the side. And haven't ran into the other one yet. But. Okay. They start with Mr. Lavery, which is on one side, and actually across the street, uh, um, house directly across the street has been renovated into a yeah. you know. Um, a condo complex, I believe, two units. Yes. Yeah, that's at the uh, forty-two forty-four Sherman. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I, I suspect that other board members have been down Sherman Street, which is a combination of uh, multifamily and single family. So, um, Kim, any questions? Yes, I do have um, a couple questions. So the pass-through or the walk-in pantry. The connector um, is that where a, a window is currently? Is that where it's going to have? That's where it's going to be. Yes. Okay. And there's there are two staircases on the back. Will those be? Will those remain in the same place? Yes. Okay. Thank you.
Kurt, any questions? Um, no questions on this one, Barney, no. Okay, uh, Barry, anything? No questions. Okay, is there any member of the public who wishes to be heard? Uh, I see Andrew Ballantyne has raised his hand. Andrew, if you can unmute yourself. Hi, Andrew Ballantyne, 51 Sherman Street. Um, I just wanted to say that as long as there isn't any impact to on-street parking, then I'm very much in favor of this proposal. Okay. Now, there shouldn't be any on-street parking issues because um, they're required to have off-street you know, parking. And yep. as Frank indicated, they should have enough room for that. Yep. Um, have there been any problems in the past? With other people on the street, not with this residence. Okay. Anybody else have any other questions? Okay, why don't we um, have a motion to close the public portion? I move we close the public portion. Second. Okay, Dave? Yes. Dave Brown, Kim. yes. Uh, Kim Mellon? Yes. And Barney over it, yes. Um, who wants to start? You want to start, Dave? Yeah, you know, the, this is difficult to get excited about, uh, at least for me. Uh, it's You end up with such an odd shape building when this is done with the attachment and everything. And I was just wondering if, um, well, I would see how the others feel, but if, if some other plans might be presented to us. That's what I have. Okay, uh, Kim. So I, I'm struggling with this one a, a bit as well. I certainly understand the applicant's request and you know wanting to have family close to you. I certainly can appreciate all of that. You know, I, I just keep coming back to: is this substantially detrimental to the public good? We have to keep in mind if something like this, uh, approval of this would nullify the intent of the bylaws. I'm, I, you know, I'm thinking also about uh, what Attorney Spillane said about the hardship in this is if this weren't allowed and this didn't go forward, they would contemplate you know, tearing it down because they really mm -hmm. do would like to have the fifth there and I'm, I guess I'm struggling with that a little bit as well. Um, I, yeah, I'm not sure. I am a work in progress. Okay. Um, you know, this is sort of one of the ones that, you know, I don't have a problem with as far as what's being proposed, but I do have a problem with it complying with the, um, you know, the variance criteria. Um, I, I guess I would be on the same you know, pages, Dave, you know, is, is, are there other plans that might be more appropriate and that would address some of our concerns? Let, let, me, go, let me go to Kurt, Frank, before you respond. And then uh, Lorraine, Kurt, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I, I share your opinion that it's, it's gonna be a very oddly shaped and looking structure. And I'm not sure how I feel about it. Um, I, I again, I, I understand the desire to have your family close by, and it makes a lot of sense for a lot of reasons. So I'm on board with the concept. I'm just not sure I'm on board with the way the house currently, uh, the proposed addition currently looks and sits on the site. And Lorraine. I was just wondering if there was some some way that the attachment, like uh, you know, trying to envision how this would be able to look like one continuous um, structure. Is there some way where they've lined up that one side to make some greater attachment that would make it look more as a single structure than as something mm -hmm. hanging off? 
but does that help with um, any of the concerns of you know of approving this that you have, Barney? I mean, it certainly doesn't answer the variance issue, but I, I I don't know whether it would answer some of the you know concerns that the others have as far as aesthetics and and how it would look on the lot. You, you, Lorraine, what you're essentially saying is to is if the pantry were not there, if the house was connected, you know, flat. Or even if the be, pantry was squared off to mm -hmm. run, like that area was to run in a line and align with the existing structure. Mm -hmm. Just would appear more uniform. But again, I think that's less of an issue than. Yeah. You know, Bonnie. Yeah, go ahead. You know, I, I, I think I um, agree with what Lorraine is saying. I, I think if you could um, take that uh, pantry and make it all, all the way across, now that gives you, you know, not, we're not here to help you design, but it gives you a squared off look from the outside. So that's more aesthetically there. You, you, you can, you're going to pick up some area if you don't change anything further. So, but you probably by picking up that area, 17 feet that mm -hmm. runway. Mm -hmm. Well, boy, if that was all kind of squared off, you might be able to, you know, do a lot of different things. Just my thought. But I think there are there are two sets of stairs in the back. Is when I drove behind oh. there, so I'm not sure if those are required you know, egresses. Well, I think that, that doesn't one set come off a deck? Yeah. So I, I, I think, um, and yeah, actually both of them come off. One comes off a porch, the other one comes off a deck. Yeah. So. Um, so you might lose you, you you know again we're not architects or designers but you you know yeah. you might lose the decks but or just just one just so lose one of those staircases mm -hmm. uh frank do you uh mr sherman want to respond um, yes, we, we want to take a look at that, uh, have an architect look at it. You have to have a number of uh, egresses from the different units. I'm mm -hmm. not familiar enough with it. Um, if the board was uh, open to it, if we could continue it until the next uh, meeting, the board feels that um, if we can see if we can uh, square off the building so it looks like one continuous building, um, I think would uh, give him some time to work with his architect to see mm -hmm. how it, it does. Because right now he's telling me on that, the side porch by the driveway, it comes out and you turn and go down. So you wouldn't want to come out and go right down to the driveway right away. Um, but I don't want to play architect, just like I don't like to play engineer. So I think um, we'd like to have the ability to have, yes, right there. Yeah. So if it comes out, you come onto the porch and you turn right and then you turn right to go down the stairs. Um, I'd want um, somebody to take a look at it to see what could be done if we connect it all the way over the mm -hmm. addition to, to over there. So mm -hmm. that we have uh, the right amount of uh, egress. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it may be part of the addition that goes in there um, goes to that back unit. You know, I'm just yeah. doing, yeah. I'm guessing right now. Yeah. Um, but if the, but if the um, board feels that that would be, um, they'd be more open to approving it. Um, if you did that, I, I think um, like from his architect have some time to look at that um, would be for everyone's benefit. You know, and the other thing too, um, you know, maybe uh, if, if they talk about exits, second exits, which is probably what the code says, there may be a way it could be handled via a fire escape, you know, rather than a set of stairs. Maybe, I mean, it's gotta be looked at completely. Exactly. And yeah. 
would and I would be with. willing to, uh, you know, move this for another meeting, Bonnie. Let them think about it. They heard our feedback. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I mean, I raised the issue, you know, a couple of minutes ago about whether the, um, you know, variance criteria was satisfied. Um, but let me just say this: I, I don't think so. I, I know that Frank thinks so, but I don't necessarily <laughs> agree. But if if everybody is satisfied with how the house will ultimately look and nobody else is really concerned about variance criteria i can get over that so you know i think maybe the best thing is to is to continue it and give um you know mr sherman and his architect an opportunity to to review things and come back with us mm -hmm. yeah So You're right, though. It's something to think about getting over the, the, the hurdle because you do add another unit, which basically is, you know, I've always told people it's not our responsibility to figure out how somebody can, uh, you know, make more money. Uh, added apartment units give, certainly gives uh, that value at some point, even if it's not. Um, I mean, it's a relative now, so I'm sure rent would be not much, if anything, but. So right, go ahead. Um, again, there, there's enough area on this lot for a five unit. So yeah. under the, I'm sorry. Uh, no, so I agree. On a knockdown, you certainly could do five units, maybe even more. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, um, if it had been determined that it was a pre existing uh, three family, um, it would have been is non-conforming so we wouldn't even be talking about a variance now it's just a finding in order to do um, the, the 20 feet there and of course the change to the modification but um, my, my gut feeling from reading um, again all those um, files is you know there was litigation talked about back and forth but to try to come to, to a uh, compromise at this time he wants to use the land for the purpose that is available under the zoning, which is the five um, unit, um, but for you know the uh, eighty nine decision, um, you could use that. Um, again, it was something that a prior his father uh, agreed to, so we are bound by it with regard to the modification as well as variance. But again, it's a it's a um, 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 minor request going from 20 uh, going to 25 down to 20 and in this area you know different houses built way back when weren't built in a particular area it was built they were more built for where was the easiest place for them to build it back then you know and there was no side yards or no consideration for, for the future here um so i i as Barney has indicated, you know, I believe we've, we've met it. Uh, uh, but again, we're more than willing to look um, into making the adjustments to the design as being requested tonight. Uh, but again, if, if, if the board never thinks we're ever going to get over that variance hump, um, you know, we don't want to waste anybody's uh, time and effort uh, with regard to that. And then what we'll do is we'll take a consideration in there and come back with one that's 25 feet off of the side yard, see if that's um, available. But again, if we come more 25 feet off of that side yard, it's gonna get into the um, uh, driveway because they have looked to shrink it as narrow as, per, as, as possible uh, so they can get what they want with regard to the um one floor living space yeah but we're more than willing to have the architect really look at it to see what uh the comments indicated tonight so so let me ask the other members of the board where do you feel or how do you feel as far as the variance itself <clears throat> well as presented it's i'm having a real problem getting there mm -hmm. I agree. 
I agree. And so could you just remind, just to repeat, so you had said to get the 25 feet, if that were going to be a direction that this could go in. So what you're saying is it would be pushed an additional five feet away from, the numbers are very small on here. I'm having trouble reading it. Oh, that's much nicer. Yeah. Um, uh, so an additional five feet away from the lads, Brendan and Lindsay Ladd, is that correct? Yes, and, and therefore the parking would also be pushed at least five feet. And maybe if they do push it out, they're gonna wanna widen it. I'm sure they'll work with the architect and the engineer to see the best design. But one of the reasons they did this also was to, to try to keep the parking away from the other single family residents also. Uh, so if it's pushed out um, five more feet, again, the, the uh, parking will go another five feet towards the laveries. Can, can the parking be put in the back or, or is that a problem with the drain easement? Um, it possibly could be put in the back. I'd have to talk with the engineers um, mm -hmm. about what's back there. And I don't know the topography back there and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they were trying to use what is there now mm -hmm. um, without adding any more uh, impervious surface. Uh, then you know it's what's re required. So again, that's an engineering question. That yeah, looking at it, it possibly could go back there, um, and I'm sure they'll look at that. So, so what you're saying is, that in in back of where the proposed unit is, it's either dirt or grass. Now it's not um, it's not concrete or or asphalt. No. No. Okay. No, you can kind of see the light line of what's mm -hmm. there now. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can you see the two sheds and you can see the, the, the line. That is just where the pavement is currently. Okay. And, and that's why the impervious surface doesn't jump up as significantly as you would think uh, because of the addition. Mm -hmm. Most of the addition is going on impervious surface as it is. Barney. So where are we? Go ahead, uh, Lorraine. So if in order to meet that setback requirement, they were gonna have to move all of the parking, that wouldn't be considered a hardship. Just from a cost standpoint. I'm, I'm not sure I follow you. So you're saying if they were to move move the building in order to, I think you're saying that there isn't a hardship, right? You're not observing a hardship. It sounds like that's what everybody's saying. But the fact that they would have to, in order to meet that 25 foot requirement would cause them to have to move all the parking that well, if, if they met the 25 foot side yard setback requirement, they wouldn't need a variance. Okay. Well, that's what. The, but in order to do that, they have to move all the parking. They would have to move it somewhat, I would think. Yeah. In, in so, order, let's see, you have to have what, a 24 foot driveway, uh, Barry? Yes. So if you move the house five feet closer towards the Lavery property, you wouldn't have, as they're showing right now, you wouldn't have a 24, 24 foot driveway between the parking area and the house. So you would have to move the parking area. It would all dull them. You know, at least five feet closer to the Laveries. And so I'm just asking the question, is the fact that that creates a whole additional cost not considered a hardship? No, again, because they, they wouldn't be needing a variance at that point. The, the, the hardship is one of the criteria of, of a variance. Yeah. So something relative to topography, shape, conditions, uh, soil conditions is, is one criteria. Hardship is a second criteria. And then no, no detriment to the bylaw is the third criteria. Okay. So, so again, if he were to move the house 
five feet closer to the Lavery property, he's no longer violating the setback on the portion of the property that, that's next to the to the lads. So I'm just, therefore he does I, not need a variance. He, he complies with the uh, setback, the 25 foot setback requirement. Yeah. I guess I'm I'm just thinking of the avoidance of the cost of doing that. Does that play in factor in this? Well, no, no. Okay. No, again, um, I would think that if if Frank, I'm sorry, if um, you know, Mr. Sherman were to move the house again five feet closer to the, to the laveries, again, we don't need a variance. Um, I suspect the only reason they would be here would be to, to modify that first condition or to eliminate that first condition. Mm -hmm. Uh, possibly, and I, I can't remember if we would need a finding also. I would want to double mm -hmm. check that. Um, but um, I mean, this board in the past has, has found hardship when uh, someone can't use their property for an allowed use under the zoning. And this property has an allowed use of up to five units because of the area. It's just because of the location of the existing house, which was built up. Mm -hmm. At the, at the latest in the 40s, if not earlier, because they have horse hair in there, uh, which indicates that it was probably built even before that. Um, you know, if, if it had been um, off of 25 feet, you know, we wouldn't be having to do that because we'd be lining up correctly. It's just because that it's so close to it. And again, if it was a pre existing non conforming structure, we wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. or a variance either. So it's a unique circumstances, uh, you know, back in the day when uh, an agreement was reached, they said, it's, it's a two family, but we'll give you the variances to go from two to four. We're asking for the same variances to go from four to five. Back in 89, uh, this board determined that uh, the variances were, were um, uh, recognized and, and, and now you're, you're not recognizing it uh, the same way. I know Dave had some issues back in the day. Uh, <laughs> he, again, their family, uh, they've come in and looked at me, talked with me a number of times. I've talked with um, uh, Bill Buckley, the engineer, to get things aligned correctly. Um, again, they came in here trying to see if they can get the variance. Again, if you don't think the variance is uh, applicable, you know, um, you can give us that indication. We'll probably just ask that they be withdrawn or we just continue it to be able to come back showing you a, another plan that's 25 feet off so that we don't need the variance and just a modification and possibly a finding at that time. Um, it's what, whatever the board prefers at this time, what direction we would, you'd like us to go. Um, but they would like to try to, uh, be able to put um, an additional unit on here for his in-laws, mm -hmm. whatever this board feels comfortable. Because again, if you, you don't like the way it's connected up now, if you push it out five more feet, it's going to be off-centered from that uh, the um, initial house. They wanted to keep it on center there, um, or at least that's what I advised them to uh, at one point. If you want them to connect it up more, I, I think we'd like to have an opportunity to go and. Um, um, speak with their architect and see if we can do that for you. Uh, but again, if the board doesn't think they can ever get over the variance request, which again, I think the hardship with regard to a um, dimensional variance it can be minimal. And, and the courts have said that, and this board has said, said that in the past. And I think the hardship is here. And a lot of it has to do with the uh, old building and the old decision and the way it's it's there, but whatever the board um, thinks is best, you know, we'd like to have an opportunity to go speak with his architect, see if we can come up with something that this board would be comfortable with. You know, I guess the, the the one thing I'll say as far as the you know the hardship is, you know, again, he 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 is using the house right now or the property right now as a as a multifamily house, so we're really just talking about a a unit. Um, not, not, not the fact that he's prohibited from using it for multifamily purposes, but 
again, what what's everybody's appetite? Dave, Dave, oh, hasn't, had dinner. Dave hasn't had dinner yet, so his appetite is. <laughs> wow. I I would um, I'd like to see the the, the uh, plan rethought. I think I can get there, you know, um, with the feedback that we've given tonight. We'll see what they can do with it. Uh, do you want it just connected or do you want it moved five feet? Or would you like to see both? Both. Both, Frank. Okay. Yeah, I, I have one question about, I'm trying to remember the, the existing parking. Is that paved or is it gravel or is it a mixture? Paved. It's it is paved. paved. Okay. Just couldn't remember. I, I think back in 1989, Dave, there were some issues when I read the minutes relative to people parking in the front and on the front lawn. Yeah. So, well, you know, paved. back in 89 or 88, you had selectmen show up, which is kind of unusual. So I don't remember exactly, but there certainly was more going on uh, or they wouldn't have been bothered with it. You're absolutely right there. If you read the file, you can read between the lines that something else was going on. Yeah. And I think it was it was not kept up by the prior owner. And when his father bought it, you know, he thought it was a three, one turn to a four. Yeah. And they Shaky. got on him to say, bring it up. And so I, th I think you're absolutely right. So. So why don't we um, why don't we continue it then? Please. Yeah, I move. Do you need a motion, Bonnie? Yeah. I would move that we continue this hearing uh, to allow the uh, applicant to, you know, gather more information uh, based on our feedback to our next meeting. Uh, March eighteenth. Meeting time after. Time? Or, uh, I'm sorry. Well, you know what we can do? we Because obviously we're not in the same room, so we can't sign a piece of paper together. Um, <laughs> why don't I continue it until, why don't we continue until our April meeting? But obviously okay. if you're, if you can come back in March, we'll, we'll do it then. Yeah, but you have to continue it to a date certain. If you do it to April, I can't come back in March. So why don't we do it to March? March, okay. And, and if we're not ready, um, We'll tell we'll you just that. Keep move it out further. Okay. And and Diane, why don't you put us last in case there's other people? So if we do have okay. to push it forward, you guys don't have to uh, wait ten minutes for the next hearing or something. Uh, Kim, you want to second that? Okay. Uh, Dave, Dave Brown. Yes. Uh, Kim Mellon. And Barney over it. Yes. Diana, why don't you, um, when you get a chance tomorrow morning, I guess when you're back in the office, email me the um, continuation form. Okay. Okay, I'll sign it. I'll scan it. I'll send it to Frank. Frank, if you then get it back to Diana. Absolutely. And why don't you just leave uh, continuation date open-ended? How do you usually do it? Do you just put it forward to one month or? The last time we you know, last time we did it, we, we continued it to, um, I think, like like three months. Um, why don't I continue it to the end of March? Well, why don't we do it to the end of April, just in case we do it? Yeah, April? Okay. You know, never knowing what the architect's going to be able to do, because he has to come up with a couple different plans now. Mm -hmm. So um, I'd like to get in if, if we can have it on time and get it to you in, uh, well in advance, too, to look at it. Um, you know, I won't get you anything, you know, two days before. I'll try to get it to you at least a week. In a, in a okay. Day. So when do we continue to April 30th then? Yeah, just in case. So that if I just send you a letter saying, please continue it to April, we're good to go with that. With that. Okay. Are you talking about continuing the hearing to the end of April or writing the continuance form to the end of April? Uh, the form and we'll yeah. continue the hearing until March. Okay. Because if we can get it together, we'd like to get it in with March and um, uh, but if we can't we'll just continue it to April and again I, we won't send you guys this stuff the day before two days you know we'll try to get it to you a week in advance so you have time to look at it okay great great
Okay, you want a you. new motion, Bonnie, or do you want to just? Yeah, why don't you make a new motion? <laughs> no, so I move that, that we yeah. um, continue this hearing to our next meeting, and that we have Frank. Frank has agreed to sign a waiver form to the end of April uh, for the decision to be. Um, oh, for the yeah, for the decision to be made. Second. Uh, Dave Brown. Yes. Tim Mellon. Yes. And Barney over it. Yes. Anything else on this? No. Thank you very much for your time. And thank you. We hope to see you okay. next month, not yep. April. Great. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> so now we got some general business, right, Barney? Yep. Yep. Uh, minutes. I have you... um, Barney sent me some. Um, spelling corrections <laughs> um, you don't have spell check it they're real words they're just not the right ones <laughs> <laughs> well there were there was a little bit more than um than, than just some spell check words um you know i i had thought about this one change and and i actually had forgotten to to make it and then barry gave me a call and and I said, you know, thank you for calling because you reminded me that I neglected to make one change. At the very end of the discussion relative to um, the 15 Baker Street um, application, um, there was wording in there that uh, connecting the two structures was allowed by right. And we eliminated the by, by right words. All right, yeah. Now, in relation to that, um, I would not be surprised if in March, um, Frank brings an application to um, connect those two for a special permit to allow the two structures to be connected. Okay. He's talk, you know, he's talked to me, uh, he's talked to Barry. Um, Diana said that Stephanie Silby stopped by the office today, or was it today, Diana, or yesterday? Um, she talked to her on the phone. On the phone, okay. So I, I would not be surprised if we um, if we have an application from Frank to for a special permit to connect the two units. And that would obviously allow for a uh, two family home. Mm -hmm. We got anything else? Well, we have to approve these minutes now. Yeah, but we have, uh, yeah, anything else on the minutes? Oh, okay. <laughs> I would move that we approve the minutes uh, with the corrections that uh, Bonnie made. Are you, we saw all the corrections, didn't we? I, we just got to approve the minutes. You just say as amended. As amended. As amended. Okay, uh, Kim second. Okay, Dave. Yes. Kim, Kurt, and Lorraine. Yes. Okay. Um, anything else in, in Diana? We get any other applications or any other people nope. sniffing around? Nope. Um, nope. I don't think I've heard from anybody. Well, I, uh, everything goes through Barry now, so you can ask him. <laughs> <laughs> and anybody, Barry, talk with you? Or? Nope. Okay. So maybe we'll have one or two things next month and that might be it for a while. We'll see. Okay, I move we adjourn the meeting. Second. Okay, again, roll call, Dave. Yes. Kim. Yes. Kurt. Yes. Lorraine. Yes. Okay, and me, yes. So everybody take care. Hopefully we'll see you all soon again. Enjoy your dinner, Dave. Thank Enjoy you. Dinner, <laughs> Bye. Mike, Mike Weber, thanks very much again. <laughs>